Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, November 7th. It is a beautiful, cool, crisp fall morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Only about uh, 30 degrees when I got up this morning, so cold, but uh, getting up to the mid-50s, uh, partly sunny. Great day to rake leaves. I'm not raking leaves today, though. They're not going to go anywhere. I'll get to them. Enjoying, uh, this is a 7LE 313KS, nice little print shape. I don't smoke this pipe very often because it's one of the twin bore stems. Hopefully you can see that. But um, it's a nice pipe. And someday I'll make a stem for it that's a standard stem. I'm smoking this pipe for a reason that I'll get to in a moment. And I've got some 8 o'clock coffee. I finished up that Alton Brown multitasker in, in record time, actually. <laughs> it's wonderful stuff. So thank you again, Mark in Rhode Island, for, uh, for sending that along. And guys, I highly recommend uh, Alton Brown multitasker coffee. Smooth, solid. Uh, if you like 8 o'clock and those sorts of coffees, you'll, you'll enjoy it. If you like the... Uh, over-roasted, burnt Starbucks stuff, you, you'll hate it. Ah. So this is Haunted Bookshop. I finished up a bowl of Pegasus earlier and switched over to Haunted Bookshop. And uh, yeah, life is good. So today I, I wanted to talk a little bit about a concept uh, which you'll, you saw in the in the bumper at the front. Concept is energy follows intention. And we're going to talk more about what that means and what I mean by it, which is not what the New Age uh, movement means by it. So don't, don't run away and think Mike's gone uh, crazy. I may have gone crazy, but, but don't run away. And it relates to this pipe stem and another pipe stem that I'm working on. So energy follows intention means exactly what it sounds like. If you're going to apply a force to something and you're controlling that force, it's going to go where you intend it to go. Why the heck am I talking about that? Well, I'm working on a GBD Prince, which is a very similar shape. And this is the stem that I'm making for it. I was sent the pipe without a stem and asked to, to re-stem it. So the approach I take with that is, you know, I usually will find a picture off and off of smoking pipes. Uh, my printer was running out of ink. That's why it's pinkish. but. Uh, print the picture out, measure it, you know, take actual measurements off the picture, take actual measurements off the pipe, and then make a correction factor, you know, ratio those so that I can figure out if, if the stem is this long in the picture, how long, long would it be on my pipe? And you can do a nice job of that and sort of get the basic dimensions. So that helps. And then, you know, you, you look at pictures and you try to get something close, but there's nothing like having an example in your hand to compare to. And that's why I've got this pipe down here. I'm going to use this because it's, it's the same basic shape and I think it, the profile is nice on that. So, you know, I can look at this and I can say, well, in this <laughs> in this orientation, I'm pretty darn close. I, I'm happy with that. But when I turn it this way, this is hard to line up in the video. When I look at it from the side, I'm turning the wrong one, there we go. You can see that that's very thin at the top, and this one is still a bit too chunky. So I got some work to do there. And it's hard to know that if you're just looking at this. So this, this really helps having this in hand. And that's the reason I brought it down. Okay. So I was working on this yesterday. And yesterday this was, you know, very blocky. You've seen how I make stems. You know, the first thing I, 
I cut out is the um, is the, the button and then I, I sort of shape it from there so I get like a slot here and then I've turned the tenon and, and then there's still like all this um, ebonite rod and then I sort of rough sand it or on the belt sander to get the basic shape but it's still very blocky and what I've been doing lately is I've been relying a little bit more on the belt sander to get this closer to the final shape just to be faster and that's fine you know I don't uh, obviously I don't get to exactly the final shape because I still got a lot of material to take off here so I was over at the belt sander yesterday and I'm you know, to do this, you have to focus. You have to really pay attention to what you're doing. And the belt sander's running, and I'm, you know, moving this along. It's actually moving it along this way. For, for the sake of, of uh, completeness, I was moving it along this way. And for just a moment, I, I stopped paying attention. And I twisted it a little bit too far. And I wound up, I thought, taking too much material off in this area or maybe it was this area it doesn't really matter uh the point is i didn't you know it still was was perfectly within the parameters i was trying to achieve and and it's fine but it was close i almost lost this stem and you know maybe not a big deal but this is probably about six hours work at this point and i i don't want to have to redo that if i don't have to you know for something stupid that i do so that was an example of a lack of intent. My mind wandered. I was not focused on what I was doing. And the result is the energy did what it, what it does. It removed material um, because I wasn't paying attention and it could have removed the wrong material. This is the reason why I like to use hand tools. And I, this is true not just in my pipe repair work, but in woodworking in general and in other things that I do. I Sometimes I have to use a power tool, and there's nothing wrong with power tools. But when you use them, you need to focus your intention very tightly and don't let your mind wander. And you can do that, and there are people that are excellent at it. You know, I... I one, I took a year off from college. I'm not going to get into the full story here. Maybe I'll tell it another time. And I installed kitchens. And I worked with a guy who was a master carpenter. Learned a ton from him. Uh, these were prefab kitchens that we were putting in. But you know, we, had to, we had to put in the, uh, all, all the cabinets and then the, the countertops. We didn't do the plumbing or the electric, but we did everything else. And we had to cut the the hole for the sink now these countertops were very expensive you know they were custom made to to fit into the client's kitchen and we would have to cut a hole in it for the sink and i was terrified of doing this because you know you go off just a little bit and you've ruined a you know a thousand dollar maybe more I, I don't remember what these things cost but they were expensive uh, countertop. This guy would walk up with a um, circular saw and just plunge it in and and cut it out. And it was remarkable. Uh, it was remarkable to watch the confidence that this guy had. But he never talked while he was doing it. He never had no radio. You know, just okay. I'm going to cut this the sink now. And he and we left him alone. I watch, but I didn't say anything to him, and zip, zip, and out would come the, the block, and the sink would fit in. There was measuring and all that, you know, they, but I'm not trying to say that he was, uh, you know, magic or anything. He had, he had to measure it out, but the skill that he had with that circular saw was something that I personally have never been able to master. It's, to me, a circular saw is uh, slightly better than a chainsaw <laughs> in terms of being able to, to cut wood. Uh, much happier with uh, with a handsaw, to be honest. But he was able to control that energy, and he was able to focus his intention. When you're using hand tools, it's easier because it's slower. So when I'm filing on a stem, I've, I've told you before, I only file in one direction because that's what I was taught to do, 
and apparently that's the best thing to do for the files. When you drag them backwards, you're actually harming the, uh, the cutting edge. That's what I've been told. I know not everybody agrees with that. But that's not the main reason I do it. The main reason I do it is that it's slower. You know, I take one stroke and then I lift up and I come back and I take another stroke rather than scrubbing back and forth. This allows me to focus my intention and that directs the energy of each stroke. So I can take off just a tiny bit of vulcanite in areas where I need to get close. You know, if I'm trying to, to match the, the, the stem to the shank, for example, uh, you know, a slight deviation there can be disastrous because it can either ruin the, the stem because you go too far, or if it's on the pipe, it can ruin the pipe because you wind up filing into the briar. So the fact that energy follows your intention then means you have to focus on what you're doing. You have to clear your mind. You have to be in the present moment. And honestly, this is going to sound wacko, but it's a meditative process. You know, when we go through life, we go to the grocery store, we cook dinner, we watch TV with the wife, we do all these things. It's very rare that we can isolate just a single thing and focus on it. It's, it's even rarer that we can focus on nothing. Um, that's what meditation is. It's just clearing your mind. Okay, and you don't have to sit cross-legged on the floor. I can't sit cross-legged on the floor. And, you know, hum or whatever. You, you just have to focus your mind every once in a while. And you don't have to do it for three hours. You do it for two minutes. It, it's healthy. It's psychologically healthy. And for me, working with hand tools allows me to do that. It allows me to have that focus and to clear my mind. And I find it to be a very therapeutic process. So, yeah. And, I, and that's true not just with pipe repair. You know, when I'm doing woodworking, I prefer hand tools. If I'm, if I'm uh, you know, fixing a door or something, I, I prefer the hand tools. Now, I'll, I'll take a screw gun. You saw me use a screw gun when I built uh, the, uh, the pipe rack that I got from Mo. Um, I'll use that sometimes for speed. Uh, if it's something like putting together a prefab thing like, like, a, like the pipe rack was, or if I'm like taking a door out, I want to get those screws out quickly. I use the screw gun then, but if I'm trying to fit a piece of wood or, you know, if I'm building a pipe rack, I don't want to use a screw gun in that case. I don't want to use screws in that case, but that's another story. I want to be able to focus that energy. Now, when I was getting ready for this video, and by the way, this is the second time I'm, I'm making this video. I, uh, I forgot to hit record. Uh, Kilted Piper Steve talked about that yesterday. I think I caught it from Kilted Piper Steve. Uh, when I was preparing for this video, I, I did some Googling, uh, looking for an image, and I just typed in energy follows intention, and I was shocked to see all this new age stuff come up, all this, uh, you know, balance your chakras and Reiki massage and all that. I'm not into that stuff. If you are, great. Uh, it's just not for me. But... There is something, the, the way I got the, the tag, Energy Follows Intent, was actually through something else that is a bit crazy sounding for me, but I might as well share it with you. So for the past year, I've been doing a form of exercise that's called Qi Gong. It's Q-I Gong, G-O-N-G. Qi, Q-I is pronounced Qi Gong. It's actually a part of uh, Kung Fu practice. It's, it's called an internal martial art. And if you're familiar with Tai Chi, it's similar to Tai Chi, uh, but it's, it's more stationary. With Tai Chi, there's a lot of movements where you're like dancing around. With Qi Gong, you're staying in one place and you're just doing movements with your arms, your legs. Um, it's very good for flexibility and balance. And I can tell you, it's really helped me a lot with pain both back pain and the knee pain that I've been experiencing. And just general, like, you know, getting up out of a chair, you know, as you get older, um, you start to feel like, you know, you stand up out of, out of the chair and you have to make a noise. It helps with that a lot. So you'll, you'll find a lot of videos on this if you, if you Google it. And I'll try to remember to put a beginner video down below in case you're interested. 
it gets it. Qi is an energy. This goes to ancient Chinese medicine practice or current Chinese medicine practice. There's this this energy, this life force called Qi, and you've got it in you, and it's in the world. You get it from the sky, and you get it from the earth, and trees have it. And you know, I don't go in for that. Um, but what's interesting is when I'm doing these, you know, so when you watch people do this, you'll see them, they'll complete a, a set of movements and then they will focus the energy and you'll see them taking their hands and like pushing the energy down. And there's three centers according to the Chinese medicine practice. There's, there's a center right between your eyes. There's one at the level of your heart and there's one a couple of inches below your navel. It's the, the lower center and that's where the chi supposedly likes to live. So they, they're bringing it down. And as you, you, you do this, you, know, you go through these movements and sometimes you're bending all the way over and, and, and then standing up and, and then taking a moment and bending all the way over and stand. And you finish this and you feel this like warmth in your head and you, you can feel it kind of like start to move down. And I'm a neurophysiologist, that's my background, that's my training, I'm a scientist. And I know what this is. You know, I know when I bend over, there's a change in blood pressure. When I come back up, the body has to adjust to that change in blood pressure. Vessels dilate, vessels contract, blood flow changes, muscles get different levels of oxygen. And you feel this, you feel this as warmth. It's very easy to understand how people thousands of years ago, 5,000 years ago, did this and said, hey, there's energy moving through my body. It doesn't invalidate what they're saying, okay? It's not this this energy force that's in the world. It's it's your body reacting to something you've done, and perhaps that has healing properties. Perhaps I'm actually exercising the blood vessels, or by changing the oxygenation level of different muscles, maybe I'm I'm exercising them in a way, or clearing away toxins from them, or something like that. I don't want to get too far into this. But I, I think you get the idea. You shouldn't discount these things just because they have names you don't understand. Some, you know, something that's been going on for 5,000 years and people are still doing today and people are claiming incredible health benefits from it, there might be something to that. So, why do I bring that up? Because that's where I learned this concept of energy follows intention. And it's, it's, I think it's more related to the external martial arts like the Kung Fu practice, which I don't know very much about. But if you're trying to strike something, your whole body energy should be focused on the fact that you are going to strike that thing. And that's very different than, you know, looking over there and trying to punch something. Uh, the energy that you want to flow into that movement is going to follow the intention that you have for that movement. It's not always true. You know, it's not mystically uh, powerful. You know, there there is this branch that I just learned about from my pre-video googling of thought that says, you know, if I intend to be a millionaire and I direct my energy towards that intention, I will be a millionaire. You might, you might, and certainly if you don't direct your your energy towards it, you won't. Like, well, you might get lucky, but you know, you probably won't. So, so you're increasing your chances, but it's not a guarantee. Um, if you're you're at a carnival and you're throwing a ball at those that pyramid of bottles that if you knock over, you get a teddy bear or whatever, you're intending to hit those bottles and you're putting your energy into that intention, and for some reason, you never hit them. I don't know why. So it's not a guarantee that the energy that you put into that ball will follow the intention that you have. If you're a pitcher, you can be really good at throwing strikes, but it's not guaranteed, even though that's your intention. But the point is, when you're, when you're directing energy, whether it be through hand tool use or throwing a ball or preparing a meal or whatever you're doing, when you're using energy, it's going to be important to try to focus on what you're doing because that's going to direct how the energy works. That was a really long way to go to say, if you're using hand tools, pay attention to what you're doing. But I hope you found it interesting. Um, 
it's something I've been wanting to talk about. I, I did a video a while back called uh, something like Ma Mastery, or and I was going to do a series of videos on Mastery. And I thought, you know, that's kind of pretentious because I'm not a master at anything. No one is. We're all on the road to mastery, if, if that's what we want to do. You know, so I might want to become a master pipe restoration guy. I'm never going to do that. No one will. But I'll stay on that road and I'll keep trying and I'll focus my energy on that road. You might want to be a master duck call maker or, or a master hunter. Or maybe you want to be a master chef. You can actually get that title, but that's not what I mean. Well, you're going to focus your energy towards that. And, and, and you'll be on that path. And you'll be on that path until you decide to get off it. You'll never get to the end. It's a wonderful thing, actually. It, it means there's always something to learn. There's always ways to improve your skill. So what's going on here? Well, uh, I'm working on those stems. I got two two pipes for this customer that I'm re-stemming, and I'm hoping to finish those up in the next couple of days. Next up, I've got a incredible project where I'm going to make a 10-inch long church warden stem for our buddy Greg Tunnel in acrylic. I don't know if I can do this. I honestly, the longest stem I've ever made was eight inches, and I had to make that three times before I got it right. This is going to be interesting, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do it. Um, and uh, if I fail, I'm sorry, Greg, I, I, I'm going to give it my best shot. Uh, I'm making a stem for our buddy Mark, uh, Bama Guitar Dude. It's going to happen, Mark. I'm sorry I'm so far behind. There's two folks out there after that that I need to get pipes from, and I'm getting very close to asking them to send in their pipes. And at that point, my list is done, except, Rick, I know you've got some work you want me to do uh, that, I, that I promised I would do. But, I, you know, that's going to continue. I'm going to have odd jobs come in now and then. But I'm going to take a break for a while and try to just focus on some other things. Um, pipe related, and I'll, I'll keep making videos, and I'll keep you involved in all of that. But I'm not going to take any new pipe restoration orders for a bit. Uh, just got to gotta have time for other things. And life has just been too busy to uh, to do it properly. Well, not to do it properly, but to do it in a timely fashion. So, uh, This Friday, we're going to be doing an auction for um, my buddy Justin, who passed away, Justin Aldrich. Um, Justin was a member of the YTPC. Uh, I met him through the YTPC, uh, got to know him really well because Justin was a master fly tire using that term master, but it applies to Justin. He was a professional fly tire. Um, got to know him really well and uh, really enjoyed his friendship. And he sadly passed away at a very young age, leaving behind a wife and I believe six children. You see some of them here. Um, and I wanted to, I was making some corn modified corn cob pipes for Justin. You've, I've told the story many times now. And uh, I, I didn't know what to do with them, so I decided to auction them off. Several folks in the community said, hey, I'm going to add something to that auction. So we're going to have some some rare tobaccos uh, from a couple of donors. I've got a rare tobacco that I'm going to include. We're going to have the two modified corn cob pipes. Uh, Kilted Piper Steve and Miss Kathy have donated one of Miss Kathy's uh, beautiful pipe rolls, and uh, that's going to be in the auction. And James Stumbo has generously donated, um, and they're all generous, generously donated some, uh, two of his pipe stands, a uh, beautiful tobacco tray, and a really beautiful handmade knife. And I'll, I'll show you all of this stuff in a video on Wednesday. I'll have a video just dedicated to showing you all of the auction items and, and talking through each one. So Friday's going to be a fun night. We're going to, we're going to auction, uh, we'll probably start the auction you know, we'll let the room fill up. We'll probably give it about 15 minutes. So we start at 8 o'clock, probably about quarter after 8, we'll start the auction. And when that finishes up, we'll just hang out and, 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 and chat. So it should be a good night. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I hope you can join us. Uh, I hope you can bid. But even if you can't, if, if you can just join us and, you know, provide some, some support. Um, I don't know if Justin's wife is going to be watching. I'll send her a link. But... Um, regardless, just 
seeing that you know a number of people turned out for this, I think will be uh, a, a good thing for her. And uh, you know, I hope we can raise some money for her and the kids for the holidays because it's going to be a hard holiday. You know, just just losing someone that close to Thanksgiving and Christmas it's it's got to got to be tough. So let's, as we always do, come together and do what we can for this family. All right, folks, with that, having done this twice, because I forgot to hit record the first time, I hope it came out okay. I hope you enjoyed the, the, the chat and uh, maybe gave you something to think about. I'm going to finish my pipe. And uh, do some sem, sem standing? Stem sanding. I don't know what sem standing is. Stem sanding and filing uh, to get that, the, the, hopefully get uh, closer to finished on those two pipes. So I hope you have a great uh, Sunday, fantastic week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.